Hello, welcome to another exciting tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to find the standard error of the IC50 value. Next, I'll talk about how to find the standard deviation of the IC50 value. Then finally, how to do the same in the case of an EC50 value. If up to this point you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'll ask that you pause this video, smash the subscribe button, hit the like button and the notification button so you don't miss out on any future exciting tutorials. Let's move straight into the first item of today's tutorial. How to find the standard error of the IC50 value. Here I have some sample data from GraphPad Prism. In this sample data, X represents the time in minutes. And here we have response values in triplicates. The first thing we are going to do is find the IC50 value of the log transform data. If you haven't yet watched my video entitled Finding the IC50, I suggest you pause this video, go watch that video and come back. So first, let's log transform the data. So click Analyze, select Transform, then OK. Then select Transform X values then make sure x equals log x is selected. Click OK. Now the x values are been log transformed. Now select the log transform data sheet. Click Analyze. And then Nonlinear Regression Curve Fit. Click OK. Since our data has to do with inhibition, go to log dose response inhibition and select log inhibitor versus response. Now GraphPad Prism calculates your IC50 value for you. As we can see, we have our IC50 value. Under standard error, GraphPad Prism gives us the log, the standard error of the log IC50 value. This is because our data was log transformed. Therefore, GraphPad Prism can only calculate the log, the standard error of the log IC50 value from this data. GraphPad Prism also outputs the 95% confidence interval of the log IC50 value as well as that of the IC50. In this tutorial, we are interested in finding the standard error value for the IC50 value, not just the log IC50 value. To do this, we need to let GraphPad Prism calculate the IC50 value for our data without log transformation of the x values. Let's go ahead and do that. First select your original data sheet, click analyze and then nonlinear regression, care fit, click OK. Then under dose response inhibition Select inhibitor versus response. Click OK. Now GraphPad Prism calculates the IC50 value again, this time for data without log transformation. As you can see under standard error we have the standard error of the IC50 value. 
instead of log IC50. This is the value we are interested in. Now I want us to do a comparison of the data from both analysis. Here we have the data for in the case of no log transformation. Here we have the data in the case of log transformation. As you can see, the IC50 values are the same. In fact, almost every other value is the same, except for hill slope, which in this case is a difference of a negative value. And this is due to the log transformation. Without log transformation of the x values, Grappard Prism provides the IC standard error of the IC50 value. When log transformed, it provides the standard error of the log IC50. Up to this point, we've been able to find the IC50 value, the standard error of the IC50 value, as well as the confidence interval for IC50 value. Next, we want to calculate the standard deviation of the IC50 value. Now, standard error is equal to standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of replicates. In our case, we have three replicates. So from our analysis, the standard error of the I62 value was 0 0.8269. And the number of replicates was three. So putting that into the equation, we can make standard deviation the subject and obtain the standard deviation of our IC50 value. Now, the third item on our itinerary is to do the same for the EC50 value. The difference between finding these parameters for the IC50 value and the EC50 value is just very simple. The only difference here is what option you choose under nonlinear regression carefit. So first let's select our data sheet and go to nonlinear regression care fit. In the case of stimulation, we select dose response stimulation. And under this, we first choose log agonist versus response for our first round of analysis. Then, second, we choose agonist versus response for our second round and calculate the standard deviation just as in the first example with the IC50 value. It's just that simple. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial. Make sure to hit the subscribe button click the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up.